Watching the world burn, watching the world burn, April 28th, 2024, let's get into it. First thing, I always try to help you in any way I possibly can. And I put solar panels on my roof. I, they seem to be working out okay. Uh, you know, I've got a Toyota Prius Prime, which means it's basically a plug-in hybrid. Uh, and I can drive about 44 miles on a single charge. Of course, this is Florida. It's a nice flat territory. So I never have to put fuel in the car because most of the time in a single day, I don't drive more than 44 miles. So I don't burn any gas. And, you know, one of the things you worry about with an electric car is when you charge it up, your electric bill is going to go sky high. Well, the last two months bills have been consistent. They're 30 bucks a piece, which means that I'm putting more energy into the power grid, which is the way the solar panels work. Then I'm taking out, now I'm paying an $88 a month lease on those solar panels for the first year, and then it goes up each year. It's not the best deal in the world, but I have stabilized my energy bill uh, for electricity because I knew that charging that car, and by the way, it takes so much energy charging that car that on the same circuit, if I plugged in my power washer in the car at the same time, uh, it would blow the circuit breaker. So that tells me, you know, I'm drawing over at least over 15 amps. Uh, so, you know, that tells you that car draws and it takes five hours to charge. So you're drawing, let's just say 10 amps, 8 amps, somewhere around in there uh, for five hours. I mean, that's a lot of damn electricity. So I'm very happy. Let's get into the news. So uh, we got, uh, well, the first thing I wanted to comment on is I, I, a person asked me, he said, "Did the is the flotilla from Turkey uh, traveling to Gaza. Well, that was from uh, Ray, Ray McGovern. Uh, he reported on that on Judge Napolitano's channel. I haven't heard anything. I haven't seen anything on Twitter. I haven't seen anything on Telegram. I'm following the news. So my answer to the person that asked the question is, I don't know. I don't know if there's a flotilla that's still coming out of Turkey to help the people of Gaza. Uh, and of course, they're starving to death. Um, so, you know, I always try to address the comments. Please leave your comments anytime. By the way, I don't get the comments because YouTube censors them. If you want to leave comments, Rumble's a much better place to leave me comments. Uh, or, well, to a certain extent, X. But I think I'm being throttled on X also. Uh, anyway, but... Anyway, let's just get into the news. Um, so right now, Hezbollah is bombing northern Israel tonight. Uh, we have attacked the Israeli settlement of Mehran, and it's adjacent air command base with dozens of, and I, I, I just got to spell this for you, K-A-T-Y-U-S-H-A, Kayuska rockets. No idea what that is. I guess it's something that Iran makes. Uh, Israel media reports that it was the largest attack on the uh, Mehran Air Command base uh, and so far, and radars have been severely damaged. Um, so we can see the war is uh, continuing on there. Um, I, I just, I did want to comment, before we get into me reading all the latest news, uh, the palace, you know, the students protesting around the United States. I'm, I'm very proud of them, but I, I'm not sure they're protesting for the right reasons, and I'm not sure <laughs> that a lot of agitators aren't being funded by George Soros. That's uh, that's what I'm getting out of a lot of the media, is that uh, he's he's funding people who are not students to go on these college campuses because. I've seen pictures of the tents, and all the tents are the same. Now, students, you know, unless they're being given the tents by the university or by somebody, George Soros, uh, you know, they wouldn't all have the same damn tent. Um, so, yeah, so I, but, you know, it's kind of like the enemy of my enemy is my friend. So if George Soros is funding these protests, uh, well, I think it's a good thing. I want the genocide in Gaza to end. So if he's uh, instigating uh, a lot of these uh, protests, well, I mean, an evil dude can do some good things, can he? <laughs> I mean, uh, so you never know how the world works sometimes, right? 
All right, so let's get into the next uh, report here. And, and by the way, uh, everybody says, uh, I get, boy, I tell you, man, Todd Stearns, I, I'm turning against that dude, man. Uh, he, he was going on and on and on about the anti-Semitism. All right, if these protests are anti-Semitic, I'm totally against them, obviously. Uh, but I don't, I don't, I think they're just anti-genocide, pro-Palestine, which I'm all for that. It reminds me of the Vietnam War. Remember back, uh, well, you might not have been alive <laughs> during the Vietnam War. Unfortunately, I was. And everybody, all of the right-wing uh, agitators back then, you know, the, the, the college students, remember Kent State where they killed the, uh, those college students, just shot them dead, uh, and they were protesting against the Vietnam War. And now when we look back, we think, well, who was right and wrong there? Was it the government and everybody that was against the students that were protesting the Vietnam War? No, the students were correct. So I'm, I'm all happy and I'm proud. And in fact, I've seen some people on YouTube that are joining the students. And from what I saw, some of the protests, the ones that I saw anyway, are very peaceful. And they're just saying free Palestine, two-state solution. I, uh, you know... And by the way, in my last video, I talked about escape from New York. I mean, what you Gaza is, is it was an open air prison with AI controlled guns that sat on a wall all the way around Gaza. Just like uh, if you go, go watch the movie Escape from New York, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. They turned New York into an open air prison and just sent all the people that were political prisoners to, into New York City. Uh, and, and starved a lot, well, tried to starve a lot of them to death. They were pretty innovative in the movie of coming up. And Boy, I tell you, Jake Pl Pliskin, uh, what was that, Kirk? Was that Kirk? Duck? can't remember. Kurt Russell. Yeah, God dang, he did a great job in that role. I love him. All right, so let's get into the news here. Our source reports that Zelensky instructed Commander-in-Chief Shirsky to use all available reserves as well as arriving military uh, Western military equipment to put out the fire on the front in order to stop the advance of the Russian armed forces. This constant advance, by the way, this is by G-E-R-O-M-A-N, you can follow him, G-R-O-R-A-N-A-T on, on, on uh, X. The constant advance of the Russians and capture of new settlements hit very hard the morale of the Ukrainian armed forces, which will begin to retreat more often and at some point when the Russians attack from all sides at once the defense in the front may collapse. It's urgent to reverse the trend before it's too late because this is necessary to throw large forces into the well he calls it a meat grinder. God, I hate that term don't you? Oh god but it is I mean it's a meat grinder and so you know for for if you follow my channel at all I've been telling you that the, the the Ukrainians were doomed from the beginning. They're just the proxies of the United States. And, uh, and I'm surprised that they put this uh, actor, this, this idiot Zelensky, in charge, and, and, and the people followed him into battle. I mean, and, and it, it, somehow he's got these generals that are, are you know, condemning. I mean, by the way, they're saying 600,000 dead Ukrainian soldiers at this point. I, I think it's far more than that. I think we're at at least a million, and I've said this in previous videos, and you know what? I'll be vindicated in the end. Well, not vindicated. I didn't want a million people dead, but I mean, what I'm saying is the numbers that I'm quoting, you know, are, are, are much, much more than, than, than what's, uh, what you know about. Uh, this is an interesting one. pro Israeli protesters caught on camera shouting, kill the Jews in order to once again blame the students and professors protesting the Israeli massacre in Gaza. But this time, they were caught on camera. So, we come to find out, yesterday the Mossad infiltrated the anti-genocide protesters with a woman shouting, we hate white people. <laughs> so basically what they're saying is that, you know, Israel has a huge contingent here in the United States, and it's just like the FBI on January 6th had God knows how many uh people in the crowd uh, agitating everybody and, and, you know, telling them, yeah, storm the Capitol building, storm the Capitol building. Same thing with these college uh, students, you know, is that the Mossad or Israel has uh, 
uh, their agents in there shouting death to Jews, death to Jews to, to make the protests look uh, the wrong way. OK, and so it's not the students that are saying death to Jews. It's actually Israelis that are saying death to Jews. <laughs> Isn't that ironic? And, and, but they got found out. And I'm so glad, you know, that this is where I, you know, it's wonderful that we've got X and we've got social media that brings these things to our attention. Uh, this is uh, clandestine. Uh, remember when the MSM launched a coordinated campaign to blame, uh, well, Navalny, N-A-V-A-L-N-Y. Remember when uh, everybody was talking about in the West that, you know, Putin had him killed and, uh, he was the, uh, the, the, the one person that could have run against Putin, even though he only got, you know, 2% of the vote. <laughs> I mean, it was, he did worse than, uh, uh, who was it uh, I, that ran against Trump? Anybody that ran against Trump, uh, he did worse than them. So turns out it was all a lie, and the Wall Street Journal just admitted it. As myself and many others told you, Putin stood nothing to gain from Navalny's death. But that didn't stop the mainstream media from capitalizing on a good tragedy. The damage is already done, and yeah, and I agree with them, the brainwashed public have already been programmed to believe this lie. Uh, most all will see uh, the retraction, and the cycle continues. Perception is power. And, and that's what the mainstream media does, I hope you understand. You know, they come out with their stories. Remember Russia, Russia, Russia. Trump was a Russian agent. And then we kind of found out that it was a complete lie. And there's still many Americans that still believe uh, Russia, I mean, Trump and Putin are buddies, you know, that they get along together. No, they don't. And that, that whole Russia, Russia, Russia hoax was done by Hillary Clinton. But most Americans have no clue because they just believe the initial lies. And that's what he was saying here, that Navalny... Uh, was a threat to Putin, and he was no threat at all. All right, so let's get into the next uh, story here. The International Criminal Court in the Hague is preparing to issue arrest warrants for Netanyahu and Israelis government members, members, Channel 12. Well, yeah, when you commit genocide, <laughs> I'm glad. Well, you know, the International Court, see, most Americans don't even know this, and this is where Sean Hannity and uh, Todd Stearns and Mark Levin, you know, they don't even tell you that most of the world is already knows that the, the, the genocide is taking place in Gaza. But yet, the, the, you know, the, the, the mainstream media, the right wing media is, is reporting, you know, oh, no, these students are all pro Hamas. Well, OK, pro Hamas. Uh, Hamas, there was twelve hundred people. Uh, by the way, if you have a link, if you have a picture, if you have anything at all that shows me that babies were cooked in ovens or show me some beheaded babies or show me the the the, the i've already seen the pictures of the cars at, at the massacre that took place at that festival but that, like i told you it was 50 cows that hit the top of those cars I, I don't think those gliders were armed with 50 caliber uh machine guns but i could be wrong i mean you know but to me that's helicopters uh israeli helicopters but anyway Send them to me. Send me the links. Send me the evidence. Send me anything that says that what Israel is reporting, the propaganda coming out of Israel. Oh, and raped women. I saw one video of a woman being dragged along. I think that her bra was kind of half hanging off. That's the only video I've ever seen. And I, I, I'm a news junkie, man. I follow everything. Send me the links. Send me something. Israel. And then, of course, then, you know, we say it's all been censored because it's too horrific to view. Okay, if, I, if it's too horrific to view, then I guess that uh, I have no evidence and I can form my own damn opinion based on it. So, once again, the Ministry of Truth is determining what you get to see and what I get to see. And so I can't form a, a, an educated opinion on what really took place on October 7th in Israel, other than... Everything that I read, which, you know, I try to cover both sides of the equation here. So <clears throat> anyway, the Israeli National Security Council held secret discussions on the possibility of issuing international arrest warrants for Pre Prime Minister ben Benjamin Netanyahu, Defense Minister Yavav Gallant, and Army Chief of Staff Herzi Halif, Halivi, 
A local media outlet reported Wednesday, Channel 13 wrote, according to the information and uh, in indications available to senior officials in Israel, there is a possibility that the International Criminal Court that the Hague will issue arrest warrants for Netanyahu. Now, is this going to amount to anything? Who's going to enforce these international uh, warrants? Well, you know what? You've got 90% of the world that wants to enforce these warrants. And of course, you've got the United States, Great Britain, France, you know, Germany, whatever, that are going to stand against it. But you know what? It says a hell of a thing when 90% of the world says that Israel's guilty of genocide. Don't you think? I don't know. Just, just, just saying. Let's keep going. This is, uh, this is interesting. You know that because I'm fascinated by tanks, and I love uh, the way the Russians have innovated their military hardware. Have you seen the new turtle tank? I mean, it's insane. It just, they, they, they actually, they put an armor. All the, I mean, why didn't we think of something like that ourselves? Or, or you know, but that, that's what it. What happens when you let the troops on the front line give feedback to the guys that are making things and they say, you know what, <clears throat> why don't we just put a turtle over top of the tank so that when the drones strike, they, they can't, you know, hurt the tank. And uh, these new turtle tanks, but this isn't, this isn't that. This is a different uh, innovation, but I just want to read you about the latest T-80 updates. So the updated T-80 is back in service. Russia has found an additional use for it. Russia has upgraded the T-80 tank to the latest standard, uh, writes Defense 24. Now Moscow plans to resume production of these vehicles, but with a different configuration and under a different name, the T-80BVM. <coughs> so, excuse me. The improved tank is equipped with a uh, Relay Kit. I have no R-E-L-I-K-T. Relay Kit. Dynamic uh, protection, no idea what that means. Uh, a Son Sosna dash U or PNM dash T fire control system with a thermal imaging site, as well as a R16825U 25 U dash two uh, aqueduct AQUEDUCT radio station. A 2A46M4 gun with new stabilization system and a gas turbine uh, GTD. By the way, gas turbine, I you know, wanted to talk about that. You know that right now, uh, May 9th coming up, uh, the Russians are going to be displaying a lot of the Abram tanks uh, in their uh, parade on uh, May 9th, Victory Day. Uh, and so it's going to be funny because those tanks use kind of a... Um, a jet engine and uh, they're so ridiculous to be uh, and they're heavy as hell so these modifications sound pretty damn good <coughs> on the t80 uh, imagine it's a much more functional tank than the m1 abram in my opinion so in addition the t80 will be used as a platform for a new version of the toss one heavy flamethrower system if you know the flamethrowers that's those missiles coming out uh, and by the way, that, so that just means it's kind of like uh, with uh, pickup trucks, you know, the Ford Explorer, for example, is just the same frame. They just put it, a, a, a frame on top of it. So if you're buying a pickup truck or you're buying a Ford Explorer, you're getting the same foundation underneath it. And that's all that they're saying. Uh, meanwhile, the Ukrainian armed forces are, are modernizing Western equipment into heaps of burning scrap metal. I agree with that. Uh, Megatron again. The previous night, the, well, this was on uh, the 20th of April. Uh, but I didn't know the extent to which the United States participated in the uh, uh, the battle uh, when uh, Iran launched on uh, Israel. And so this, this kind of brings it all out, and that's why I kept this, because these are all bookmarks. So reports now indicate that the United States... Uh, Airstrike struck the headquarters of the armored vehicles of the popular mobilization forces in Babylon. The jets took off from a base in Jordan and entered Iraq through the Jordanian airspace. This is a direct declaration of war of Jordan on Iraq. So that was April 20th. That was during the whole craziness that was going on. Let's keep going. So, you know, so we were taking a much more active role as the United States in, in that whole battle that was going on. 
Uh, this is this has been a crazy uh, tweet. Uh, if, if, are you familiar with Pepe Escobar? Uh, he's a international mainly reports on Asia, and uh, he, he put out a tweet, and I talked about it in my previous video that uh, Israel was planning to do an EMP strike on Iran, and uh, so, but but let's just let's just read what he says here. So the real story of the Israeli counter response from a very high level intel source in Asia, not Russia dash China. Although the strategic partnership, of course, exchanges at the highest level 24-7, confirmed and reconfirmed. It will be great to know what Cy Hirsch hears in his Beltway sources. So Pepe and Cy Hirsch are friends, if you didn't know. Uh, you know if you didn't know, Cy Hirsch reported on the Nord Stream pipeline, the United States blowing it up. One of the biggest eco-terrorist acts. I mean, how are the Democrats for, you know, imagine how many fish died. Imagine how much damage was done to the ocean. And yet the Democrats are all for this eco-terrorism. But, you know, I'm, that's why I'm not a Democrat. So an F-35 loaded with a nuclear bomb was sent east over Jordan. The mission caused a high altitude detonation over Iran that would provoke a surge in high capacity power lines, crippling Iran's electric grid as well as disabling all electronic devices and EMP tech. However... As the Israeli F-35 was leaving Jordanian airspace, it was shot down by the Russian Air Force. Well, if you follow Scott Ritter, he says that's impossible. Uh, no way that happened. <clears throat> I don't know, but Escobar, this is what he's saying. I'm not saying it. I'm just reading you what I don't have any connections, you know. I just, uh, I just follow the news. Hence, the uh, publicized version of the Israeli counter response was such a travesty. In the end, all, which was true. I mean... <clears throat> Basically, Israel did no damage to Iran whatsoever in their in their counter response, and and you know we, you know you've always heard of the Israeli you know they're they're going to go in you know they're they're going to strike back tenfold, which is what they've done against uh, uh, Gaza. Good God, they've killed thirty six thousand civilians, you know. But uh, so that that's their punishment to Hamas. I mean, Hamas is safe underground in their tunnels, and they're just killing everybody above. They've blown up all the hospitals, all the universities. Everything that was of consequence in Gaza has been destroyed, along with blowing up everybody's house. Imagine if somebody came by and rigged your house with explosives. At least, if I was the Israelis, I would just kick the people out and move into the house. Why blow it up? Doesn't make sense to me. In the end, all sides decided not to publicize the real news to de-escalate what could well turn into World War III. So that's Escobar. He's still doubling down on his story that the Israelis had an F-35 on its way to do an EMP strike over Iran and that the Russians shot it down. And uh, I guess a lot of people like Scott Ritter uh, uh, have come out and said, no way that's possible. And uh, anyway... So this is 20th of April. We have, this is from Wall Street Silver. We have the dumbest military empire in all of history. <laughs> I totally agree with that. In fact, I was talking to a guy at a bike shop today, and I was talking about the Humvee. The Humvee is the dumbest vehicle I've ever seen. We had canvas doors on the Humvee. We could just take a 22 and shoot anybody in the Humvee. And then when we got over in Iraq, well, you remember the, uh, the armor kits that we were trying to put on the Humvees? And then, of course, the guy what the, with the machine gun on top had no cover whatsoever. So a sniper from anywhere could shoot the guy hanging out the top to, to fire the M60 machine gun. And finally, they armored that up. Then, of course, the Humvee had no protection underneath it, which was freaking ridiculous. So when you hit an IED, all that shrapnel would just blow right up through the bottom of the vehicle and kill everybody in the Humvee. You know, usually it's about, you know, six guys would die every time you hit just a little teeny bomb. I mean, and, and, and yet this is the shit you buy with your money, your tax dollars. I mean, and who approved that? You know, I mean, this, this, is, this is why as a nation, we can't fight the next war. I mean, think about it. An aircraft carrier. These hypersonic missiles will take out an aircraft carrier. You know, it's ridiculous. All right. So let's keep going. We are supposed to loot the world for the benefit of our citizens, which we've done to a certain extent. 
Instead, we are an ATM giving away all our wealth and inflicting as much harm as possible on our own citizens. And then, of course, it's got the video of, of all the people on the House floor waving their little Ukrainian flags, which, by the way, is against the United States Constitution. You're not allowed to wave, especially a foreign nation's flag on the House floor. What a disgrace these people are. All right, this is Edward Snowden, my hero. Love the dude. Hope that someday he'll get to visit the United States before he dies. Uh, maybe if Trump gets in again, uh, we can pardon him and uh, bring him home, uh, hopefully to uh, a resounding parade. I, I would definitely try to organize that. Uh, what, a, what a hero he is. The House has voted to approve unconstitutional warrantless searches of Americans' communications. Now the Senate has to, late on Friday after the media has gone home. The only president can only the president can stop it from becoming law, and he won't because he's the one that asked for it. So what he's talking about is the FISA, uh, what is it, dash seven hundred legislation that now the government. Uh, by, and by the way, Trump, you know, I don't know. I mean, maybe Trump said something. I mean, because they used the FISA courts to spy on him. You'd think that he would have been telling the Republicans in Congress, you know, vote against this damn thing. <laughs> but, but I don't know. I got approved. Uh, so maybe uh, Trump's hoping to use the FISA to spy on the Democrats once he gets in office. I don't know. Or you know, who knows? It seems like crazy. So this is Elon Musk. This is crazy. And then it goes into Wall Street Journal or Wall Street Silver you can literally walk into a retail store every single day of the year and steal $949 worth of merchandise, and you will never do a minute in jail. This is in Democrat cities. <laughs> why, why are the Democrats going along with this? What is a Democrat voter? I mean, what do you think is going to happen when all your retail stores close down because you can go in and steal whatever you want? I mean, it's, it's kind of like you're, you're biting the hand that feeds you. You, you. you know what I mean? I, it's just like uh, what Blinken was doing over in China. You know, he's going to tell China, oh, yeah, we're going to sanction you. Well, what do you think? China's going to sanction us back. We get all of our good. We get our prescriptions from China. I mean, when the, if China sanctions the United States, it's just going to be just like when we sanctioned Russia uh, and blew up the Nord Stream pipeline. I mean, Europe is, is in a major recession right now because they don't have cheap fuel no more uh, from Russia. But, I mean, you know, it's, it, we just keep biting the hand that feeds us. And, of course, we just confiscated the Russian money uh, here in the United States. And so now China's thinking that we're going to confiscate China's money. So do you think that BRICS and everybody getting away from the dollars on steroids now? <laughs> I mean, it's crazy. Uh, but anyway, under California law, assault on a peace officer with anything other than a fully automatic weapon is not a violent crime. We really need some truth and justice in the state of California. Well, I, I wouldn't live in California. I mean, beautiful state. I wish I, I wish it wasn't such a cesspool. I mean, look at San Francisco. My God. The commercial real estate there now is settling for penny pennies on the dollar. Ah, here we go. This is uh, from April 3rd. Boy, going way back. The U.S. is confident that Russia will not be able to take Kiev. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, Excuse me, have you been watching the advances of the Russians on the front? They're taking town after town after town, city after city. And I mean, it's, it's speeding up. Entire brigades of Ukrainian troop, troops are surrendering. Uh, and if they ain't surrendering, they're getting annihilated. Russia's got these new 3,000 kilo bombs. 3,000 kilo, I don't even know what a kilo is. How does that compare to a, a pound but anyway i mean they're dropping them on the uh ukrainian soldiers I, I don't care how deep you are underground i mean you know if nothing else you're going to lose your hearing you're probably going to go batshit crazy with these bombs dropping on top of your head but anyway let's just keep going secretary of state anthony bleakin started this according to him washington is confident that the russian federation will not be able to capture the ukrainian capital although at the very beginning uh of the Northeast Military District, the American authorities had such fears. Now, in his opinion, Western support for Ukraine is too great for this to happen. Too great for what? We don't even have any shells to 
<laughs> send to Ukraine. We don't have any missiles to send to Ukraine. This is the stupidest thing ever. Yeah, I, I wouldn't even bother to read the rest of this. I mean, it's just so fucking ridiculous. Yes, if Russia wants to take Kiev, they're going to take Kiev. If they want to take all of Ukraine, they can take all of Ukraine. They just I just heard today from the military summary channel that they're bringing up 10,000 more troops because right now they're, they're advancing, uh, well, was it Adifka? Adifka, right, right around in there, and they're mushrooming out. What do the Ukrainians have to stand against? They've run out of men and women to throw into the battle. I, I, and especially, they're not even trained to fight. These are hardened, trained Russian soldiers who've been training for two years to get ready for this fight. Who's going to stand against them? You think a, a bunch of French or maybe some Lithuanians? I mean, I don't know. You, you tell me. Uh, so... Uh, and, and, of course, let's get down to, this is uh, DD Geopolitics. The Israeli attack on the United States, this was the, uh, the staff vehicle. And, by the way, I talked about this in my last video, but I didn't have the exact name. So I'm going to read this whole thing to you, just so you know. In this latest crime in Gaza, the Zionist regime targeted a vehicle carrying UN staff who were responsible for distributing food aid among Palestinian refugees the UN troops were killed during this attack, had the citizenship of Australia, Poland, Ireland, and England. And then, of course, they finish off with Israel as a pariah state. So that's it for this update. I'm glad I got through all of the news. Peace out. Stay free. You can run on for a long time. Run on for a long time, run on for a long time. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Go tell that globalist liar, that Democrat idiot writer, that rhino rambler, that nuclear war gambler, that backbiting U.S. politician, Sooner or later, God's going to cut you down. Sooner or later, God's going to cut you down.